Today is the day we say goodbye to big tires. We're gonna have to think of another thing to call this tractor. We've just been calling it big tires ever since we bought it, but we need to get in the field and do some cultivating, which you'll see later on today. But first thing first is we have to get rid of these big tires because if we ran the cultivator, that's that thing right there with these big tires on, all of our crops would be run over very quickly. So we are putting our row crop tires back on. These are the tires that fit down those 30 inch rows that are in between our planted crops. So we have Graham Tire out here and we are swapping out our Titan Goodyear LSWs for Titan Goodyear skinny tires. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but do you see the service truck? That's a Stellar Industries service truck. Same brand as our fuel trailer that's sitting right over there under the awning. Take a closer look at the cultivator bar before it's hooked up. This is an Orthman 8450. And uh, this is kind of like an old school practice. Not a ton of people still do this, but we stand by it. We do this every year. This is a non-chemical form of weed control. So this gets pulled behind the tractor, this slices, and this turns the dirt and throws it like this. So any weeds that are gonna be in the row, whoosh, plowed up and turned over into the dirt. Since we can't exactly hook this tractor up and use it yet, we're taking this opportunity. We have the loader tractor. This is the John Deere 7810. You guys have seen us make some pivot roads with this thing, but it was when it, it was all folded up. We're doing a little bit of maintenance on these shanks down here. I'm just going to show you what years and years and years of wear and tear do to this thing. Do you see this? This used to be this. I'll show you that one more time. Look at that comparison. It's not crazy what just going through dirt will do. We don't even have rocky soil. It's just years and years of wearing away. Since when we use this thing, it's folded up because we don't need this big of a pivot road, we are just taking all of those blades from this one and this one and replacing the ones in here. Who got dressed first this morning, Grant? Me? Oh, oh, look at us. <laughs> You're kidding me. I don't even recognize her anymore. Look at the, look at the difference. I mean, kind of speechless. I don't know, what do you guys think? There are a lot of big opinions about these big tires. So I'm curious, what do you think looks better? Unbelievable. Thank you so much to Titan for hooking up with these new shoes for our tractor. Now let's get this thing hooked up and head out to the field.
as you can see, a couple of our blades here getting a little worn down. So we're just gonna go through and do a few replacements. The side's all wore down, see all the dirt? But then you can just flip them over. See, we've already hard surfaced this with a welder. So we can just flip it over and use it again. Reversible, that's nice. That thing is fully used up. Both sides are wore down. It's going in the scrap pile. Now we can reuse that other blade mm -hmm. right there. Bolts go in and you see they're, they're flat right here and they just lock in on the back. They're carriage bolts. You got me. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Boy, it's such a nice day out. It's probably like, what do you think? Just under 80 degrees out? Yeah. No breeze? It is beautiful. Oh, nice. Ready to go. It feels so good to be back in the tractor cab. It's super weird because I feel like planting ended yesterday, but it's actually been like three or four weeks since I was in the tractor cab. So this is really nice. And it looks way different because we have the skinny tires on instead of the big tires. I haven't seen the tractor look like this since September, which is wild. It's a really, really good thing that we got the tires changed when we did because we couldn't have waited one more day to complete this task. As you can see, the bar is just brushing the tops of the corn plants. If they were any taller, they would be snapping off. So we're getting it just in time. All it takes is one really hot day and the corn just absolutely shoots up. It's already so tall. It's probably about at my hips right now and it's just getting taller. Right now, we have two tractors running in the same field. So I'm in this one, hooked up to a cultivator, and Grant's dad is in another tractor, also hooked up to a cultivator that looks pretty much just like this. And we are working in the exact same field. So this is a section. So it's four quarters. Each quarter is 160 acres. It's like a square here, 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 here. They make a perfect square. It's a mile by a mile. On this field, there are seven different pivots. There's one in each corner at the center of each quarter. Then there's one at the very center of this section. Then there's one over here that does a half swing and one over here that does a half swing. Like I said earlier, this is kind of an old fashioned thing to be doing. So while we're in a tractor that has a ton of technology options, these two are the iPad and the Precision Planting 2020 Seed Sense Monitor. These are only used for planting. Um, and so is this whole setup right here. The only monitors we have are this one. This is what we're using for auto steer. It's the John Deere monitor. And then this is just the monitor that comes with the tractor. It's attached to the seat. And so I can see um, like the hours of the tractor. There's 5,296 engine hours on this particular tractor. Um, and then I can see like the hydraulics um, and all that kind of stuff. I'm going 5.2 miles an hour right now. We're really going back to the basics. Just dragging a piece of iron through the dirt. Corn is just absolutely shooting up. Just you wait. It's going to be harvest before you know it. You might notice a break in the corn here. This is one of the pivot roads that we made through so that we are able to access all the engines that we have out here and start and service the pivots. We just cultivate right through it. If you can see through my dirty windshield, need to give this tractor some love. 
there's a pivot at the end here. This is one of those pivots that does the half swing. So it's only three towers. The center point is right down there and it just does a half swing, but it's kind of in the way of me turning around. So I have to do something kind of funky. So when I reach the end rows, that's where the corn switches directions. Instead of going north, south, these rows go east, west. I slow down and I pick up so that I don't tear out any more corn than necessary. And normally I would just drive straight and turn around, but I can't do that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull into the end rows. These are our purposeful turn space. We plant these knowing that some of it is going to get run over. Then once I reach as far as I can, I turn the wheel and start backing up. This is where it's very important to remember to pick up your implement because Backing up with this thing in the ground is probably just about the worst thing you could do. I swing around, I back all the way up, and I keep the wheels as turned as they can possibly go. And then once I get kind of straight again, I hit my auto steer button. And now the tractor is driving itself. So I keep backing up, I switch to going forward, my tires turn themselves. I go forward and I am almost perfectly lined up with where I need to be. So I am driving over the end rows right now, but once I get out of them, I can set my three point down and get back up to speed. So I was knocking down one row of corn, so I kept readjusting. I was thinking, what in the world? See this, just a row of corn. I was like, how is it possible that this row is knocking stuff down, but none of the rest are? Like, the, how is the planter, how could the planter be off like that? It just didn't make any sense. So I just kept readjusting, and after a while, I get out, I picked up this guy. Look at that. Luckily, I have this handy front box here. Put that in there for now. Hopefully I don't find any more surprises like that. Luckily I caught it before it wrecked too many little corn plants. And also luckily it's pretty far away from the road. So I don't think anyone's gonna notice my mistake. I got out because um, this is my next pass and last pass here. So I'm driving this way and I'm looking out that window right there and I see this. This is, I realize this may be kind of hard to tell on camera. A deep hole. I do not know what from. I mean, it's like planted right up next to the hole. And so I was thinking maybe it was like a, some sort of drain, but there's nothing. Just an orange flag and a broken piece of PVC pipe. So I'm pretty, I have no idea what happened here. We're just gonna go around this whole situation. This is why even with auto steer or you know self-driving tractors, that kind of thing, I can't just be sitting there on my phone. I have to actually be alert and aware and paying attention because of things like this. make dinner and he's taking over for me. Never know what you're gonna find in these ditches that you have to walk through to get to the road. Could be anything. Sending him off. Thankful to have the ranger to 
drive back home in. That is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.